I need you to be prepared. Because if you thought I was hard on shows and movies, my god, I'm unbelievably hard on games. I'm Terrence fucking Fletcher when it comes to video games. I'm so fucking picky and particular when it comes to video games that I'm surprised I've ever enjoyed a single one. But I have. Just not these. And remember, I don't necessarily hate all of these games. Some of them just didn't meet my expectations. But hate sells. Hate is the reason you clicked on this video. And I do actually hate some of them. Bioshock. I don't really hate Bioshock. This is one of the games on this list I actually played through to completion. And of all the games on this list, I probably respect this one the most. It is very clear they were going for something very specific here, and it was just lost on me. I do love the setting. If there's one thing I remember about Bioshock, it's the setting. It's just that the setting made more of an impression on me than the gameplay or the story or even the concepts. I'm willing to admit I might be the idiot in this situation, but I just could not pick up what this game was putting down. I remember that playing it felt very by the numbers, and the story and twists and shocking moments I felt weren't enough to win me over completely. Oh, and I also fucking hated fighting the Big Daddies. They were my least favorite part of the game. Resident Evil is probably my favorite long-running game franchise. I've played almost every game in the series. I think the remakes of 2 through 4 are the only ones I haven't played yet and the original one if you want to get technical. There are absolutely bad RE games, but the good ones are fucking incredible. So which Resident Evil game do you think would be on this list? No, that one's awesome. No, not that one. That one rules. Oh, that one was my favorite, are you kidding me? Yeah, that's the one. The original Resident Evil 3 gets way more love than it has ever deserved. It's not just overrated, it's a legitimately bad game. There's no normal difficulty, it's either easy or hard. So of course, having played all these other RE games, I chose to play on hard mode so it's not too easy. Then about halfway through the game, of course I'm stuck in a spot where I can't proceed because I have no health or ammo left. So then I started from the beginning on easy and naturally the whole game wasn't challenging at all. I have no idea why anyone would design a game like this. What fucking game doesn't have a normal difficulty? On top of that, Nemesis is fucking annoying and not even fun to fight. I don't know how this game keeps ranking so highly on greatest RE games lists. It may not be the worst game in the series, but that's only because this other piece of shit exists. If Resident Evil 6 is the only reason another Resident Evil game isn't the worst, that's fucking bad. Dead Space. I tried playing the first Dead Space once because the whole fucking world told me that it's one of the greatest horror games ever made. And that should have been my first clue because the people who think this game is scary are the same people who think that Insidious and The Conjuring are scary. This whole fucking game is jump scares. And the thing is, they're not even shocking jump scares. They are the most predictable fucking jump scares in the world. And if you can predict a jump scare, then it's not doing its only job. Oh look, here I am in this new room. I better grab all the items because I know that as soon as I push this button or grab this essential item, a bunch of enemies are gonna crawl out of the vents. This is so scary! Oh, and what's the one thing this game is known for bringing to the table? That you have to shoot their limbs instead of their heads? Whoa! That's so crazy! You just changed the history of gaming forever! Fuck outta here. The Legend of Zelda, wait for it, Majora's Mask. I cannot for the life of me figure out why anyone likes this fucking game. I've only played five Zelda games, but with three of those other games, I can absolutely understand why this franchise is so beloved. These games marry gameplay, upgrades, and puzzles so perfectly that it's totally understandable why people think so highly of them. I may need to check a walkthrough here and there to play them, but there's enough to figure out on my own for me to go, okay, that's good game. But when I played Majora's Mask, I needed a walkthrough the entire time. I don't think it's possible to beat this game without one, and if you did, you have more dedication to playing a game than I have ever had for anything in my entire life. This game introduced gameplay mechanics into Zelda that only exist in this game, and exist to its extreme detriment. No action-adventure game should ever have a time limit. This made the game completely unfun to play. If it had just been in the beginning before you figure out how to travel back in time, just to make us go, oh, okay, that would be one thing. 
But this time bullshit makes finishing a dungeon in one go fucking impossible. If you don't start exploring a dungeon at the exact start of the full number of days, you're fucked. Honestly, if you want more reasons why this game blows, just watch the Angry Video Game Nerd's review of it. He pretty much sums up the rest of my thoughts. Donkey Kong 64. There is no game on this list whose presence on it makes me sadder than DK64. Because this game could have gone down in history as one of the greatest 3D platformers of all time. It had so many things going for it. Fun moves, the level design, an amazing hub world, and I'm a fucking sucker for a great hub world. It was all there for the taking. But then they had to fuck everything else up. I love backtracking in a platformer, if it's fair. Hey, I must need a move that I don't have yet to access this part of the level. Beautiful! I love that! That's something that Banjo-Tooie did amazingly. But DK64 does backtracking a little differently. Each character in DK64 has their own color-coded bananas that only that character can collect. So you pick that character and follow the trail with their bananas. And those bananas will lead you to a thing that you need another character for. So now you have to go all the way back to the select barrel because they didn't put those everywhere like they should have. Pick that character to open that door. And now there's another thing that you need another character to access. This happens about 200 times in this game, and it is fucking annoying every single time. Also, this game has the worst mini-games I have ever played in a game. And they are everywhere, and they are required to advance in the game. You'll get a new move and finally access a new area, and that feeling will be completely ruined the moment you see one of these fucking barrels and have to swap flies for the 20th fucking time. And after getting through all of this bullshit, you are then required to beat these two fucking arcade games to access the final boss. Like, it wasn't enough that you collected every golden banana, fairy, metal, etc. No. You now have to beat these arcade games that totally derail the entire game you just played in order to finish the game. If it weren't for all the money and wasted time Rare spent on this bullshit, who knows? They might have had enough resources left over to make Banjo-Kazooie 3. Fuck this game. Every Final Fantasy game except for 7. I need to preface this by saying that I have not played every Final Fantasy game. I'm missing some. However, I've played 5 of them, and those 5 are considered to be the best of the best. I'm talking 6 through 10. Now, Final Fantasy 7 is an absolute masterpiece and one of the greatest games I've ever played. It's so good that the enormous amount of exposition they drop doesn't even bother me. This game got me to care about its characters and its world, and that's hard to do. And its battle system is so smooth and easy to understand. But playing these other talked about FF games, I came to the conclusion that the reason 7 was so brilliant is because it's the only one where everything was married properly and in the proper amount. I could not for the life of me get into Final Fantasy 8, 9, or 10. I think I made it about halfway through 8. I hate that fucking junction battle system, I hate how melodramatic the game is, and I fucking, fucking, fucking hate Squall. Squall might be my least favorite video game character of all time. He's a dick to everybody, and I hated playing as him. 7 was melodramatic too, but at least I could root for those characters. 9? I can't even remember why I stopped playing 9. I just got bored. It's a boring game. I played 9 recently, like last year, I think. If I remember correctly, there was too much story, not enough action. But the story was boring. Too much boring story, not enough fighting. And its world wasn't interesting to me. I don't know. With 10, I have to admit maybe this one was a personal problem. But I could not fucking understand the battle system in this game at all. I tried. I looked up how it works. I could not wrap my head around it. I don't think I made it past the octopus fight in the beginning of the game. It's rare for me to admit that I'm stupid, but this time I think it's me. So many people love this game, so a significant portion of the populace understands how it works. I don't know. I'm not playing it again. Then, there's Final Fantasy VI. Or, three. You fucking know which one I'm talking about. I actually did beat this one. Barely. But 6 does have enormous positives. Battle system? Solid. Story? More than solid. 6 was good enough to keep me playing till the end, but... 
Six has some serious issues. Too many party members, including one that you lose forever if you don't do the right thing at the right time. This fucking opera bullshit that everyone fucking loves even though it's the most annoying part of the game. Also, the enemies are all still images. And before you say, come on, it came out on the Super Nintendo, so did Chrono Trigger, and look at those battles. Those enemies fucking move. But the worst thing Final Fantasy VI does, it does with its final boss. This game introduces this mechanic that is nowhere else in the game where your dead characters get replaced in every round of the fight. So you have to equip each party member with the right shit and then pray to God that they each get killed in the correct order so they get replaced with the correct next party member. This weird ass thing that exists nowhere else in the fucking game made the final fight with Kefka probably the most difficult final boss I have ever played. It took me somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 tries to beat this fucking boss. And by the time I did, I was not having fun anymore. I did not feel a sense of reward or accomplishment. I was just wondering why I wasted my life on this. Mass Effect. I saved Mass Effect for last because the reason I don't like this game is very simple. And to some of you, it may be very stupid. But to me, it sure as shit wasn't. I started playing Mass Effect one day and made it to the hub world. Now so far, I am really enjoying this game. I'm running around this hub, learning all this shit about the world and the aliens, doing all these side quests with a little bit of main quest mixed in. And this place is huge, and I am talking to every single person I find in every single area. I'm spending days just on this part of the game. So, this one day, after playing for an hour or so, I go up to the docking bay, but hey, look at the time, I gotta go to work. So I save my game and turn it off. The next day, I boot it up and... What the fuck is this? Why am I stuck in an elevator shaft? Why can't I open the door or go down the shaft? I'm just stuck here. What is this? I went online and found out that this is a problem with this game. So I tried doing a couple of the things they told me, including saving here and re-reloading. Nothing worked. I lost at least an hour of game time during which I had done a bunch of fucking side quests that I now don't remember where they all are. And uh, fuck that. I ain't replaying all that shit. More like ass effect. I should have just replayed Bomberman 64 the second attack. Folks, thanks so much for watching. Agree with my takes? Disagree? Let me know in the comments. And like, subscribe, and click that Patreon link for one measly dollar. I'll see you next time.